back to quarantine cooking with Stir Crazy. Today I'm doing two recipes for you. Uh, we're doing vegetarian sumai dumplings, which is a typical and classic uh, dim sum recipe, which is one of our most popular classes. So I'm going to show you how to make it. It's super easy. Um, I'm actually going to show you how to make your own wonton skins as well, because sometimes people can't find them. Uh, so that we're going to go through. And then I'm going to show you how to make some um, chicken breast pancakes or duck pancakes if you have duck available. So let's start over here and just look at these ingredients. So this is for the sumai dumplings. Firstly you've got your wonton wrappers, goyoza wrappers or wonton skins. They're both pretty similar. The one's round and the other one is square. But please always find this brand. That is the best brand. If you can't find it, obviously we're going to show you how to make, a, make it yourself. You've got ginger, a little bit of corn flour, um, and some salt. And the salt is going to go into the flour, which is to make our first um, gyoza skins. Then we've got a bit of uh, cabbage. I've got some dried or rehydrated shiitake mushrooms. Then I've got some peas, spring onion, soya sauce, a bit of uh, sesame oil, and then uh, some Chinese rice wine. You can tell it's Chinese because it says so, I suppose. And yeah, if you can't read Chinese, then the best suitable alternative is Moni's Pale Dry Port or any kind of port if you'd like. So either one would work just as well. Um, and yeah, that's it for the, the dumpling. So we're going to start off with that and then we're going to move on to the other recipe. So you see me put the salt in the flour already. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to add some water in. In fact, a little bit of oil first. So you need about probably uh, two teaspoons of oil in there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water in. Let's just be careful how much water we add because we don't want it too wet. And uh, now this is one of those nice therapeutic things uh, that you can just stir around while you're in lockdown. Lock, get lockdown Larry off his couch. Hey. <laughs> right, so you can see it's starting to come together a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit more water and put that in. And you can see it's starting to gather around the edges. And then as soon as this is um, done, we're going to actually let this rest in the fridge for about 10 or 15 minutes. Just so that the, the gluten can start binding. And uh, then we'll pull it out and we'll show you how to make the wrappers. So that's nicely mixed up. I'm just going to finish it with my hand. Just like that. And... Uh, You'll see it starts getting a little bit crumbly. If it is a too crumbly, then obviously you just add a little bit more water. But at this stage, I think it's looking pretty good. You can see it's rolling up quite nicely together. A nice little dough. So you can see it is going to be a little bit clumpy. I think we've got enough water in here. And then uh, I'm just going to roll this around a little bit. And then we're going to cover it and refrigerate it. Um, and leave that in the fridge just to get the, all the elements to bind in there. So all you've got in here is water, a bit of olive oil, um, some salt and then a flour. So I'm just going to cover this. And stick that in the, in the fridge. And this is going to be the makings of our little wonton skins. So if you can't find those two, this is the way to go. Right, so we cover this in the fridge. Okay, then the next step is to start putting the bits and pieces together for our, our sumai. Let me just remove those. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start chopping some things up and putting them into a bowl. So I've got um, about a tablespoon of ginger here. I'm just going to add that in there. We're going to take these shiitake mushrooms and I'm going to drain them. And also this sauce over here is actually really nice for putting into stocks or stews or anything like that. So you want to try and reserve that. So we're just going to let that sit for a little bit. Um, you can actually see how nicely rehydrated these are. They actually, you can push the water out of there, which we will do a little bit later. Otherwise everything's going to just get a bit wet. So this is what a, a dried shiitake mushroom looks like. If you don't have shiitake mushrooms, you can use button mushrooms. Um, probably not black mushrooms, black mushrooms are a little bit strong, strong. You can also use shimeji mushrooms, but all of those would work quite nicely. Okay, I'm going to take 
half of my peas and put my peas into there. Just leave a little bit left over. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of soy sauce to that. And then I'm going to chop some cabbage up. So you're just going to slice this up really nice and fine. Um, and the recipe says about 100 grams. I'm not going to do 100 grams, but um, it will be enough just to do some nice fillings here. I'm just going to chop that up fine. We're going to add this to the mix. And then we're going to take a little bit of spring onion and chop that up quite fine. Let's take the end off. And people often ask me, how, do you, how much of the spring onion do you use? And you can actually use the entire spring onion. So you don't need to stop at the white part or the green part. It just depends what you're using it for. So for something like this where you're not going to see much of what's happening, um, you can actually chop up the whole green onion um, because the flavors are exactly pretty much the same and uh, oh, you get that nice richness of the spring onion. Sometimes I find that these bits are a little bit stronger than the, the white pot. Okay, so you put that in. I'm going to take my mushrooms. In fact, let me just squeeze them out a little bit more. Get the water out of there. You see the water dripping out of there. There's some really nice stock in there. And then we're going to chop those up a little bit. Okay, and you can roughly slice these up. The nice thing about dim sum is it's actually quite quick and easy. Um, just to make, you can make two or three of these different types of fillings and once you've got your filling sorted out then it's very simple just to, to keep going and make your little wrappers and steam them and you can literally eat as you go, which is fantastic. Alright, so that's all in the bowl. And then I've got a little bit of corn flour. I'm going to add some corn flour in there and that's just going to bind it a little bit. You can use whatever flour you'd like. You can use potato flour, you can use uh, gram flour, and add a little bit of, of um, normal wheat flour in there. And this is just going to help bind all of this together. Okay, you can see the colors coming through quite nicely there. Then I'm going to take a dash of my sherry, and be adding a, probably about a tablespoon of sherry into that. And then a little bit of our sesame oil. And the sesame oil just adds a little bit of flavor to that. And that's pretty much everything that we need in there. Okay, so we're ready to rock and roll with our, with our dumplings. Okay, so whilst that sits there and the flour just it gets absorbed a little bit, um, I'm going to show you around here. So if you just come around this way, I just want to show you how to prepare... Um, your steamer. So, if you'd watched last time with Jody, he used a colander and a plate. So, I'm going to use the same technique, but you can also get one of these. Obviously, if you've got one of these steamers, you can use a steamer and put a, a lot of a baking paper, paper in there. Just remember to spray your baking paper. So, you're going to use a spray and cook, and you're going to spray that if you're going to use that. But I'm going to go the difficult route, and we're going to take a little cake stand, cover it with a bit of tin foil, spray this a little bit, and you spray this just so that it, <coughs> the wontons don't stick onto it, and that sits quite nicely in there, if you can take a look at how that sits, and we can take this and then stick it over our pot of water, just like that, and that forms a perfect steamer. Okay, so we're ready to rock and roll there. Right. Now I'm going to bring the dough out and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the dough. Christy, hi Christy. She said it's almost like being right in your kitchen with you. Almost but not quite. Cool. <laughs> okay, so this is dough that's been sitting here for a while, so I rolled this up a little bit earlier. 
Um, it is slightly wet, so I'm actually putting some flour on the table, and we're just going to knead this. And once your dough has been sitting in the fridge, you need to knead it for about five minutes or so, just to get it going, um, and just to get it to bind nicely. And also we're warming it up, making it a little bit more elastic. Okay. Jan says she's very pleased you're doing veggie dish tonight. Uh, cool. Yeah, basically with this dim sum, you can put any kind of filling you want to in there. It's, it's, it's very simple. Um, you can add some chicken into there. You can add um, beef or pork if you'd like to. Um, even mince. Mince works really nicely. Um, but yeah, you can make everything vegetarian if you'd like. So you can do a whole vegetarian evening. You can even go pretty much vegan with this, I think. True. Okay. Right, so we're just rolling this a little bit. So I'm going to give it about two minutes. Okay, while I'm rolling this, let me explain what we're doing for the duck pancakes. Um, or duck and chicken pancakes. So, firstly, here are our ingredients for that. We've got a bit of uh, cucumber. There's some spring onion. There's some grated ginger. I've got Asian five spice. If you don't have Asian five spice, you can do a combination of nutmeg, a bit of cinnamon. Um, you can add some Szechuan or black pepper into that. Then I've just chopped up some um, carrots. There's a little bit of hoisin sauce. Um, and shiracha, I'm going to show you what to work with a little bit later. And then my favorite sauce, or one of the nicer sauces, is a Sha Sui sauce. Not because it's anything in particular, it's just because I like saying Sha Sui. Sha Sui sounds nice. There you go. And we've got an option on rice sauce. And then tonight we're working with um, some large wraps, the tortillas which I explained to you the other day you can use for tacos. And then we're using some chicken thigh. So I've got some skinless chicken thigh here. Sure, this is a hard work. I need some wine. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, everyone. Sure, yeah. Voilà. <laughs> Today I'm drinking fat bastard Chardonnay, which is what I'm going to look like at the end of this lockdown. <laughs> there you go. So let's roll this a little bit more. Okay, and this is pretty much ready. So what I'm going to do is now just roll this out a little bit. I'm actually going to put it onto a board. And then we're going to slice it up. Yeah. So I'm going to take this and I'm actually just going to take a section of this, roll this into a little bit of a ball. Quite a lot, I'm going to take a smaller one. So you can see the size that you need, it's not very big at all. Okay, make that nice and round, then we're just going to start rolling, and you're going to move your dough around so that you create a nice circle, and actually just going to put a little bit of flour on here as well, so it doesn't stick. This is a little bit sticky, but it's working. So you can see how I go around in circles like this. Okay, so I'm trying to get this as round as possible. I think I'm doing a pretty good job here. Considering that I've got a square head. Okay, there we go. So that's one of your first dumplings. Okay, that's pretty much what it looks like. Okay, so let's pretend I've rolled all of these out. Here they are, all neatly wrapped. There we go. Okay, so this one's a little bit smaller than that, so I'm going to make this slightly bigger. Just so it matches that size. And this is quite an elastic dough, so you can, you can stretch it out quite nicely. Right, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of this and add a little bit more flour into that. We're going to take this and mix this up. Won't you pass me a big spoon, please? We've got a delicious combo of peas and carrots, and, if not uh, peas and cabbage and everything here. So I'll put a little bit on top of this. Add a little 
little bit more. So these ones can actually take quite a lot of filling, which is nice. Okay, then I'm going to take this and I'm going to roll it and pinch. And as I go, I'm going to keep on pinching and pinch again, pinch again, pinch again, pinch again, pinch again, and the last pinch. And there's your little chasseuille dumpling. Okay, you can see the nice little folds you've created around the side. Okay, so I'm going to put that one over there. I'm going to show you one which we'll do in a, a standard gyoza wrapper. Gyoza is such a nice name. Sounds like you're swallowing something but not really meaning to. And what you do over here as well, you just take a little bit of water. So put a bit of water in there and you just wet the edges. If you're obviously working with your um, homemade dough, you don't need to. So you're just going to take this and pinch again. And the wetness obviously makes it stick nicely. There you go. Pinch, pinch, and pinch the last one. There. That looks really nice. And you can push it down a little bit, and I'm actually going to add some more filling into that. If you want to make it more of a sort of a, how can I say, thicker um, consistency, you can add a little bit more flour, or you can add something like uh, choc courgettes or that kind of thing in there. Right, I'm going to make two more of these, just to show you. And there's a number of different ways that you can make these. I'm just going to show you a different uh, pinching pattern. So this is a traditionally what the pot sticker ones would look like. I'm just going to wet the one side and we pop it over like this. And you pinch it all the way around. Go. I'm just going to wet the end as well, show you the inside, and I'm just going to take this and just fold it like that and like that, and like that and like that, and this is probably the, the sort of dumpling that you are most familiar with. Here you go, here's a nice little different shape dumpling. Money bag. Sort of a money bag, yeah. And then I'm going to give you another standard sumai. One thing about these wrappers, if you look carefully, these, this looks like one wrapper, but they're actually stuck together. So they are quite thin. You can see my hand through there. So they're quite thin wrappers. Okay, so I'm going to put that on the go. Uh, what are you looking for? Right, so this is the last one. Okay, fold. Fold, 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 all the way around. When you get to the edge, it starts getting a little bit tricky, so you've got to start pinching everything in. You can use both your fingers, all of your fingers, and just fold it in like that. Push it down a bit. And add a little bit more on top. Okay, there we go. And then traditionally on the sumai dumplings, you actually add some peas. Where are my peas gone? They disappear. Right. So you're just going to take a couple of peas and stick them on the top, just like that. There you go. All right. Now I'm going to take my little stand and put them on there. So these can literally just go straight on into the steamer like this. And we're going to steam these for about 8 or 10 minutes, which is going to give me just enough time to start making your next dish. There we go. That goes in there. I've turned up the water a little bit. And everyone see that? I'm putting the lid on. We're just going to sit with that for a bit. Okay, so those are your sumai dumplings. Pretty straightforward, nice and easy to do. Okay, so we're going to get on to our um, chicken pancakes or duck pancakes, whatever you've got. I've got some deboned chicken thigh here, and I like chicken thigh because chicken thigh um, is a little bit more rich for me, and it's not going to dry out as much as something like a chicken breast, but you can use, you're welcome to use whatever you fancy. I'm just going to take this and I'm literally going to take the 
the meat off the bone and slice it up into little strips like this. It shouldn't take too long to do. Okay, and uh, what you want to be making these nice strips so that you can get all the flavors and things coming in here when we fry it up. Just gonna get this pan on the go. Oil. Okay, so the recipe is on the website if anyone wants to go and take a look or download it. Um, and this one is actually a lot simpler to follow than uh, even the Sumai recipe. So let me just do three of these quickly. Take all the bones out. And yeah, as I said, it's probably easier to do chicken breast, but I fancy the thighs. Just personal choice, things I like, so there we go. Any, anyone have any suggestions, questions? This is happy oh. too. Yeah, so this makes me happy. So making sumai and dim sum. Dim sum actually means heart's delight. When you make something that is your heart's delight, you're happy. And then when you're cooking it, you're happy. And then when everyone is eating it, everyone is happy. So you're spreading the happiness all around the world with sumai and dim sum dumplings. Yeah. yeah, teaching you how to debone chicken breasts. Obviously these chicken, these chicken bones and things like that are perfect for making a stock afterwards. I'm doing a very rough um, deboning of these thighs. Okay, so cut those into strips. Okay, so I've got my oil on the go. I'm just going to add these into that. Fry those up a little bit. Right, so we're just going to brown these a little bit. I've got it on quite a high heat. And we're going to add some black pepper into that. So about half a teaspoon of black pepper. Then I'm going to add some ginger into this, so about a tablespoon of ginger. And then my five spice. And the five spice gives us this really fantastic flavor. Okay. Right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a dash of sesame oil to that as well, just to give it a little bit more flavor. And have a drink while all of that is cooking. Okay, so that's what this is going to be the lettuce now. Remember I said to you, my, one of my favorites is the charcuterie sauce. And it's this really nice, thick barbecue sauce. It's almost syrupy that we're adding to it. And this gives it a fantastic flavor. If you don't have charcuterie sauce, you can use some famous buy sauce, like Jimmy's or one of those sort of things. But it's not really the same thing. Or you can actually make your own. And I can add a little bit more food. We've added about a tablespoon of salt onto this. That's what it is there. Yeah. That's looking delicious. Okay, I'm going to turn this down. Then I'm going to show you how to make pancakes. You ready? You see a wrap? In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to cut first. We need to chop a couple of things up. So I'm going to slice up some um, some cucumber. And what you want to do is to slice this cucumber. In fact, it's a little bit long, but not to worry. I'll trim that down. And we're going to just take the, the edge off the cucumber until we get down to the, the wet bits. We don't want any of the wet bits on this. The wet bits are just going to add moisture to our pancakes, which we don't want. And that's literally enough. We don't need much more than that. 
You're just going to chop these up into little matchsticks. And this has been washed and cleaned nicely, so no coronavirus on my cucumber. Okay, that's perfect. I'm just going to put this aside in a little container. I'm going to just trim this down a little bit, just like that. So I've got my carrots, cucumber, and I'm going to take some spring onion. And spring onion, this one we're going to do differently. So I'm going to take this and just take the end off. And you need a small knife for this. I'm just going to take that and slice it down the middle. And then you're just going to do nice little strips like that. And be very careful. Keep your, your claw hand in, making sure that you don't slice yourself. So we'll do another one of those. There we go. Alright, perfect. So that's all we need for that. Okay, so this is done nicely. You can see that starting sauce has actually made it nice and sticky. I'm going to turn it off completely. Then I'm going to take uh, one of these wraps. And we're going to do the same thing as we did last time. Is I'm going to take one of my nifty bowls. And you can buy these little ones in the in the shops, but I find them very expensive. Um, so I'd rather get these big guys and slice it out like it. Here's one pancake. Alternatively, you can actually make your own pancake. So on our recipe, um, if you look carefully, you will see that there is actually a pancake dough recipe just there. So you're welcome to take the recipe and make your own pancakes. Right. So what I've done now is I've taken these three guys, I'm going to put them into a little steamer, just like that, there we go, and we're going to leave that for now because everything is ready for that, and then I'm going to show you not how to put it together, but how to eat it. Okay. Right, so I come to the dim sum here. So you can see our dim sum here is starting to look really nice. You can come a little bit closer. It's got this sort of transparent look, so you can actually see all of the ingredients inside. So it's falling apart a little bit. I'm just going to pinch them together. All right, and I'm just going to leave that on for another two or three minutes. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to put my pancake dish together. So what I've got here is my winner winner chicken dinner, which I'm going to put into a bowl, just like that. And there are all the ingredients for your pancake wraps, and I'll show you how to put those together just now on the plate. All right. Then we're going to take out the dim sum. Let's go with some. Okay, so this is our dim sum here, which has been cooked really nicely. If you don't have chef hands, then I suggest you use a a little holder. Yeah. Just put the odd bassoon out over there. And then I'm going to make a really quick sauce. Just to show you how to do that. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taking a tablespoon of uh, soya sauce. I'm going to add some shiratsu sauce, which is just quite spicy. You can get the hot or not so hot. It's literally about a teaspoon of that. I'm going to add a tablespoon of mirin. So mirin is a fermented rice wine. You can get this in your local stores. It looks like that. It says mirin, but then it says all sorts of other stuff, which says you really need to buy this because it's fantastic. Okay, 
And then we're going to take this and mix it up a little bit. And voila! That is your dipping sauce. So you're just going to tuck that in there. If you want to, you can add toasted sesame into that. Um, or anything else. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take those wraps and I'm going to stick in the microwave for 30 seconds. Okay. So that's all the makings of your dim sum. Guys, you can make as many of this. You saw how quickly it was to make. That's taken us half an hour to make literally two really nice meals and have a glass of wine in between, which I'm really enjoying. Um, so yeah, try this at home. It's not one of those stories where you say, don't try this at home. Try this at home and experiment. Try different fillings. Try different stuff with everything that you do. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make these pancakes quickly. Ah, check. My bamboo thing caught a light in the microwave. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay. But look how fantastic that looks. So I'm going to take one of these guys out. Nice and soft. So this is how you do it. Take a little bit of hoisin sauce. You smear a bit of hoisin sauce on your on your wrap. Some spring onion, some cucumber, some carrot, some of this delicious chicken, or duck, or, duck, or whatever you feel like. And take it and you literally wrap it straight up into a pancake. Voila. Cheers everybody. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.